Welcome back to Material Mondays, my YouTube series dedicated solely to the subject of the materials that our backpacking gear is made out of. In this episode, I'm going to be going over all of the DCF samples that Hyperlight Mountain Gear lovingly sent to me. Uh, I'm gonna go over every single one in detail, show you what it is and the applications that the company uses it for. So without further ado, let's go. <laughs> Hello fellow hiker and world traveller, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. Just a quick note, this video is definitely not sponsored by Hyperlight Mountain Gear. I reached out to them a few weeks ago via email just asking for these swatches to be sent to me. Okay, so a few weeks ago I reached out to Hyperlight Mountain Gear, who are a really cool company out in the US who make ultralight backpacking gear made out of Dyneema composite fabric. I simply sent them an email asking me to send swatches of every single type of DCF that they use in their product line. They sent me every single sample except from DCF WPB, which is the one that they use for their high-end Dirigo tent. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I don't know why they left that one out. If someone from HMG is watching, please do let us know in the comments section, because uh, we'd really love to know. Unless, of course, it's a secret. Who knows? All of the information about these materials that Hyperlight Mountain Gear use in their product lineup can be found on their website. So if you go to hyperlightmountaingear.com and then go to the footer and then click on technology, it has a list of all of these materials plus all of the information that you need. So that's really, really helpful. So that's enough waffle from me. I'm gonna go through each of these samples, starting with the lightest, working my way up to the most durable uh, so I can give you guys a really good in-depth look. Okay, so this is DCF8. I have two samples here, one in clear and one in green. It's eight ounces per square yard and 26 grams per square meter. It's used in the Ultimate 2, the Ultimate 4, the Echo 2 shelter system, their flat tarps, drawstring stuff sacks and stuff sack pillows. Both of these are so, so thin, they almost feel like a cling film, slightly thicker than that, but they're like a really thin plastic. The first look and when you first get your hands on this stuff, it's kind of like, it feels like a really cheap plastic carrier bag that you'd get from say like a supermarket or something. The more you play around with this stuff though, the more that you can tell that this is much more sophisticated than just a standard plastic carrier bag material. You can see straight through the clear one, but the green one you can probably see a little bit less. If you scratch the surface of this DCF8, you can actually feel the Dyneema filaments that are crisscrossed between the two layers of uh, polyester film. At first glance, there's definitely not really much difference in terms of texture and weight. I think it's just the color between these two. It really does feel like if you pull it hard enough, you might be able to like break it, but I'm just really, really pulling on this stuff. And it's like so strong for what it is. It's just such a really thin kind of film. It's very, very bizarre. But it's amazing how strong this stuff is. I mean, if you scrunch it up, it kind of, oh, and then kind of take it back out. It just starts to look like tissue paper. But then again, if you just try and pull it, it's like, what is that? It's so, so strong. Unbelievable, like I'm just giving it everything I've got. I'm even digging my nails into it and it won't tear. I mean, if it tore, I would show you because that would just be like, what? That is crazy how strong it is. Considering how strong this stuff is, it's very malleable and compressible. So I've got my Z-Pack Solplex tent and it comes in like a Dyneema stuff sack and you can actually scrunch that down to nothing if your tent's not in it. And this is that little swatch of DCF8 and it scrunches down into like a little tiny ball of tissue paper kind of looking stuff. It's very, very thin. As far as I know, they're not using this DCF8 on things that are meant to be worn. This is solely for things like tents. Uh, they're pods that you can put like your sleeping bag in that are kind of specifically shaped for their backpacks. Uh, things like that. But you can imagine if a tent is made out of this stuff, it's going to be an incredibly light piece of gear. Okay, so that's DCF8. Now onto the next one, which is DCF11. Okay, so DCF11 is 1.3 ounces per square yard, which is 43 grams per square meter. It's used in their pods, the drawstring stuff sacks, roll top stuff sacks, stuff pack, and all of the shelter inserts. Because this is almost twice the thickness as the last one, which was DCF8, you can still see through it, and you can see the Dyneema filaments kind of crisscrossing through it. It's still very, very thin, but instantly I can feel just how much thicker this is. 
It doesn't feel like a film anymore. It does feel like a layer of a fabric. Uh, it's definitely more tangible. Uh, it's definitely stronger. It's weird though, because this is kind of like a dark brown kind of gray color. I wonder why uh, each of their different ones have a different color. Maybe it's just preference from the customers. That's the color that they want, but they only sent me this DCF 11 in this kind of gray color. If you scratch this one with your nails, you can actually feel and hear the Dyneema filaments a lot more in this fabric. And compared to DCF 8, this one, the Dyneema filaments are a lot more obvious. You can definitely see them more. The one thing about DCF is you can see these Dyneema filaments that are kind of going that way and then that way through the fabric. Now if you pull it this way on this really thin one it doesn't really stretch at all and if you pull it that way it doesn't stretch at all either but if you turn it diagonally so that the filaments are going up that way and up this way you can actually start to really stretch the polyester film. Can you see that? Can you see how that's kind of slightly stretching there? Also I don't know if you can see but the Dyneema filaments that were going straight up are now kind of going whoop like that in like an S shape and that's just where I've stretched this fabric uh, in the diagonal direction and obviously the filaments within the polyester film have had to kind of basically go with that. So that's really interesting. So you can see how this Dyneema kind of grit that goes through it actually reinforces that material so much that you just can't do it that way. If you do it diagonally, you get a little bit of a stretch and a flex. Okay, so obviously I showed you earlier the DCF8, when you stretch it one way, it doesn't go, but when you do it diagonally, let's see if it happens with the DCF11 now. Okay, so I've positioned it diagonally and I'm trying to bend it and I think because the DCF is more tightly gridded throughout this fabric, it just doesn't happen so much. Uh, you can see my fingers are getting a little bit imprinted into it, but that just isn't bending in the same way that the DCF8 did. So maybe that's why they use DCF8 for their tents and this for their pods, because they want something in their tents with maybe a little bit of flex. I really don't know if that's the answer. If anyone knows, please do let us know in the comment section. But yeah, this DCF11 is even more stronger. I mean, I can't even tell, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They're both almost just as strong as each other. One's just a little bit thinner than the other. Okay, so let's kind of scrunch this up now and see how small I can get it. And yeah, compared to DCF8, it just doesn't scrunch up as much. I mean, even though there's less fabric in terms of its surface area than the sample that I had for the DCF8, this just kind of doesn't, uh, scrunch up half as much. But still, it really does compress down quite well. Can you see now that I've scrunched it up, it just kind of keeps a lot of that pattern that I've just imprinted into it, and it starts to look like tissue paper. It's really interesting stuff. But yeah, really light stuff, very similar, almost twice as thick, and I can see why they're using this for like their roll top stuff sacks, because it's just gonna be a bit more durable, and it's gonna be able to take all of that scrunching down, and all of that a little bit more, whereas the DCF8, a little bit thinner probably just needs a little bit of flex for their tents. Okay, so that's DCF8 and DCF11. These are basically DCF sheets with nothing added to it, but what they also do is they apply what we call a face fabric to the DCF sheet, uh, and this is the lightest sample that they sent me as an example of that, which is DCH50. DCH50 is three and a half ounces per square yard, which is 120 grams per square meter. Uh, the face fabric is 50 denier white nylon, which is used for their 2400, 3400 pack bodies and the Metro and Summit pack. DCH50 has definitely got like a more dense filament uh, layer of Dyneema in it, uh, but the face fabric is that 50 denier nylon which I mentioned, and you can feel the difference on both sides. So this isn't just the DCF which I showed you earlier, this has also got that extra layer of fabric on top. That extra layer is gonna give added durability against abrasion, so if you're rubbing your pack up against rocks and you're going scrambling, uh, when you're putting this backpack down on the ground, it's just gonna protect that Dyneema composite fabric underneath the face fabric. You can't really see through it as much anymore. My fingers are kind of just blurred as I look through that. It's starting to feel a little bit more like the same thickness as a piece of paper. The shiny DCF side is what's gonna be on the inside of your backpack or any other item of gear that they do in this. Uh, and then the face fabric is what's gonna be on the outside. So that's why it's there to protect against abrasion. The, uh, the face fabric almost gives it this kind of matte finish, which is really cool. But I can imagine if you're taking this out in the desert where it's really dusty, or if you get any kind of dirt on this, it's gonna really show up. I think I should definitely do like a stain test on these and see how it fares up if you drop like mud or something on these. So stay tuned for that. That's a really cool idea that I've literally just come up with. Okay, so getting thicker now. I mean, I can't even pull DCF8 apart, but if I do this one, it's just damn near in indestructible, like really strong. I've just dug my nails into it too, and you can kind of just see 
a little bit of the markings that I just put on that. Uh, this stuff is like starting to get incredibly tough now. Uh, I can fold this uh, just like a piece of paper, but I can't really scrunch it up in exactly the same way. It just kind of bounces back. So it's definitely a thicker and a much more durable form of the same materials that I showed you before. You can see how we're really truly in the realm of backpack materials now. I don't think uh, you'd really want a backpack that's made out of DCF8 unless you wanted to go seriously light. I have seen people that have tried to make uh, backpacks out of DCF8 uh, or similar kind of weight material but they just disintegrate, all of the stitching just starts to break the, uh, the fabric apart but I can imagine trying to put a sewing needle through this it just starts to really take the stitches very well. The backing really starts to change the nature of this fabric uh, and you start to really feel that this is two different types of fabric completely stuck together. If you look really closely you can't really tell if it's a weave or not. I mean. I haven't got a microscope, it's very tightly woven if it is, definitely getting stronger and into the type of material that backpacks would be made out of. Okay, so that's DCH50, now I'm gonna talk about the next level up of fabric, which is DCH150. You may have noticed earlier that the first two fabrics were called DCF8 uh, and DCF11, but these are now actually DCH, and I think the H stands for hybrid, you can check that on their website, uh, but that basically really entails that these fabrics have a face fabric on, as well as the DCF that's underneath. Okay, so DCH150 comes in black and white, and it's five ounces per square yard, 170 grams per square meter, it's 150 denier nylon face fabric for the 2400, the 3400 pack bodies, the Daybreak, the Metro and the Summit pack and 150 denier white nylon for the 4400 packs. With the white one you can't really see my finger through the back of this, I, I don't know, you might be able to see my thumb a little bit, but with the black one it's almost completely opaque now, it's uh, really difficult to see through. You can kind of see my face or the background kind of poking through the Dyneema filaments that are in that black one, but yeah, it's getting really thick. There's not really any difference that I can see just by looking at it or touching uh, these two DCH150s except from the color. And obviously they make the 2400 in white, which is DCH50, and then also my black one, which is DCH150. So both of these DCH150s are used for different products in their product line. I've always wondered why they don't use the white DCH150 for their 2400 and only use the black one, and then use the DCH50 for the white one. One. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just uh, customer preferences, they always tend to go for the white one and the thinner one and they just don't bother making uh, the pack out of the thicker white one. Uh, who knows, that's a really good question, uh, I hope one of you guys can answer. The black DCH150 is the exact same material that my 2400 Wind Rider here is made out of. Um, it's been such a great backpack. It's really held out, I've had it for over a year. It's been with me on all of my treks around Southeast Asia. It went to Everest Base Camp with me. I've hiked hundreds of miles in it. Uh, I've really put it through its paces and you can really tell that this is so strong it's gonna last a really long time for a fabric this thin. The white one's actually just quite shiny but the black one you can really see the Dyneema filaments which are white within the uh, polyester film. It's really interesting to see that and it's a really cool looking material. It almost looks a bit like a rubber or a leather or something like that. It's very, very odd. We're kind of getting into the thickness of like a thin card now. It's no longer like any kind of tissue paper. Uh, this stuff is really tough. And uh, yeah, you can see why they're making their backpacks out of it. Last but not least, the final fabric swatch that I've got for you today is DCHW. Just like DCH150, DCHW is five ounces per square yard and 170 grams per square meter. Uh, but the face fabric is 370 denier white, 100% Dyneema filaments. They use this for the Summit Pack, the Duffel Bag, the 5400 Porter, and the Dyneema 2400 Ice Pack. It's really hard to believe that DCHW weighs exactly the same as DCH150, but that's because DCHW is 100% woven Dyneema filaments, which is much lighter than the nylon face fabric that DCH150 is made with. DCHW really does feel like a true fabric now. We, we don't, it doesn't even feel like card. It feels more like a kind of denim or like a cloth, just because of that 100% Dyneema that this is made out of and I believe that this swatch is the closest to something like a bulletproof vest would be made out of that HMG sent me uh, It's really strong. I'm not even gonna try and stretch or bend or cut this This one actually does have like a little nick in it where they've cut it. I'll see if I can kind of Tear that now that's already been cut and I can't tear that with my fingers at all or oh, a little tiny bit and you can kind of just about see some Dyneema filaments kind of poking through there, but this is incredibly, incredibly strong. 
well-reinforced material. So not only do you have the Dyneema filaments going through the DCF on one side, you've also got the 100% woven Dyneema uh, face fabric on that side as well, and you can see that. It does actually look like a kind of denim or a corduroy. You can see why they would make something like their duffel bag out of this material, because it's just so tough and so abrasion resistant. You'll be able to just chuck your duffel bag on the floor, scrape it, drag it, uh, take it anywhere. I think it'd be very difficult to bust a hole into this stuff and you could probably carry some extremely heavy loads with it. Uh, but I bet it's incredibly expensive. I haven't checked the prices on their duffel bag, but I bet it's a very expensive piece of kit that's made out of this. I've learned so much about Dyneema composite fabric after receiving these swatches and doing all of the research on it that I have. It's an incredible material with loads of applications and it's also got a really interesting history. So uh, if you didn't see my last video in this series, then click the link here and you'll be able to see that video and it gives you a full rundown as to what DCF is and the history behind it as well. Just by looking at these swatches, you get a really good idea as to what's on the market, what Hyperlite Mountain Gear offer in their product range. So it's really good uh, to get hold of them. So I guess if you wanted to just get your hands on some samples or some off cuts, just give them a quick email on their support email and I'm sure they'll probably be able to send you some. If you own any products that are made out of this stuff, then do let us know below in the comments section exactly what it is. The Trail Hunter community would love to hear from you. Do stay tuned for my next video in my Material Mondays series where I'll be putting this stuff through a very interesting test. Thanks for watching this video everyone, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you in the next one.